you know, I want to I want to look back at my life and be like, okay, I made the right decision. Yeah. You know, yeah. and I just know that medical school is, is not the right decision. It's not the it's not the space I should be in. Welcome back, you guys, to another episode of Brave Conversations. Conversations. That was late. Yeah, it's okay though. And <laughs> I think I think we got a good one. I think we got a good one for you okay. guys. And I think this is something that's relatable for everybody. Mm -hmm. So have you ever felt like you had such clear direction, a clear plan for your life, then all of a sudden you realize this is not my purpose. This, I, I'm not feeling this in my heart. I have lost desire for this. Yeah, I've felt like that, I want to say, for the past two years. Wow, two, two years. years. A little bit longer than that, but it, it took me a while to accept it. So I'm going to say two years. Ooh, two years. Oh, mm -hmm. I'm so sorry you were struggling with that for yeah, two years. Yeah, it's been, a, it's been a long battle. So, like, what brought me to this place, though, like, of, like having peace with it mm -hmm. was recently I've been in contact with an old supervisor of mine. Um, she was like my supervisor while I was in college. I had an on-campus job. Um, and we've been, since I've graduated, we've been talking back and forth via email. Yeah. So she asked me, um, Hey, we should catch up for coffee sometime. By the way, are you still applying to med medical school? Mm. And I was like, Ooh, dun, dun, dun. Dun. so yeah. the answer is no. I'm not, but this was a big question for me because like, this is a question that everybody asks me. Um, and then like my go-to response is like, oh, I'm just taking a gap year. Yeah. And then I'll apply and, you know, be that doctor that I always wanted to be. But something in me was just like, okay, enough is enough. You tired of living stop, this, this? Stop that's living not this lie. Truth. Yeah. Right. I was living a lie. And like, it, it really, I was just like, why, why? Like, why can't I just, like, why am I continuing to pretend like I want to be a doctor? Yeah. When I can just say, no, I'm exactly. not going to be that way. But the reason why that's such a big deal for me is because I've, I've basically tailored my whole life mm -hmm. since middle school around the fact that I was going to be a doctor. Yeah. That's what people know. Like, that's what people in my family know about like that's how they identify me in a way yeah like when you in my family and with friends because I told my friends that I wanted to be a doctor too when I feel like when people hear my name not to be like I'm some big shot or something but <laughs> when people when people talk about me they instantly associate me with oh Autumn's gonna be a doctor yeah so you know yeah. Autumn's in school because she's gonna be a doctor wow and you know, you know something else it just hit me. You said that you've been agonizing over this for two years. Mm -hmm. And and to be honest, in this moment, it was shocking because I didn't realize that you was dealing with this for two years. But now that I think about it, it makes a lot of sense because I remember several times you would come to me and you would be like, Mama, um, I'm not doing medical school no more. And, and it was like the way you were saying it to me as if you was trying to let me know, look, woman, now Stop. I don't care what you say. Exactly. I'm not doing I'm not this. Doing is it, this. Is it somehow you had to yeah, tell me this? Yeah. And I'm like, I never forget. I would always be like, okay. <laughs> Cause for me, that was like, I guess you can say that was my identity. Mm. A doctor. Ooh, yeah. Yeah. And like, and so that for me, it was, it was a big deal for me to say, no, I'm not going to be this doctor because that's what I was known for. Mm -hmm. And so, to deviate from that image was not only scary for me, but it was also, I was also scared of reactions. I was scared of um, how people would feel about me after making that decision. Like I felt like yes. their instant, like when people would hear, Oh, she's not being a doctor. Then like, what is she, yeah. what else can she be? Like she can't be anything else, you know, or, or thinking that you were a that failure. failure. Yeah. Yeah. That, yeah. You just wasted your whole entire life. Yeah. And and, it, and it's like mm -hmm. the dreaded, honestly, we all, whether, whether it's realistic, like whether we really have haters in life, 
I think sometimes we create our we we create haters in our mind too. Yeah. And so you just kind of envision that hater saying, "I knew she couldn't do it." Ex- oh yeah. I knew she couldn't do that. Mm-hmm. And so um, I think then that's where yeah. the fear comes from as well, yeah. with not like living your truth. And so you feel like you got to go on putting up this facade mm-hmm. um, in order to avoid this rejection from these so-called, you know, haters, yeah. whether that may be real or not. But I feel like we should give context as in like, I am a first generation college student too. Yeah. And nobody in my family history has, you know, been have a profession mm-hmm. that has so much notoriety yeah has so much like prestige and so for me to like for me to, at a young age sixth grade year old autumn to say to the family like hey i'm going to be a neurosurgeon above not only a doctor but a neurosurgeon in our family yeah i mean so everybody else listening to this they probably like okay that's a pretty common profession to pursue for us it's kind of like ain't no way yeah you know it was it's not heard of in our in our line in our generational line if you look back in our history it's unheard of like yeah. that's like that's like somebody aspiring to be an nba player like professional like uh, and you that's know that's a dream what are you talking if, about if, if i'm gonna be real right now there could have been my some of my actions and behaviors could have also aided and abetted you know you having this feeling mm. um as well because you just even recalling when you made that decision, I honestly took it like challenge accepted. Yeah. In, in you my took role. It as a challenge. My, yeah. Exactly. And, and that's how with I took my it. part with it. Mm-hmm. I'm just like, bet, mm-hmm. period. Period. That's you, it. you about to be this doctor. Right. Like, we about to train. It's exactly. training time now. Yeah. That's how I time. felt. It felt like I was training. Oh, wow. That I was being conditioned to be this doctor. Like I was going to be like yeah. the one that got us out. She yeah. made it. Oh my goodness. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I apologize for that. Uh, somewhat, Mm -hmm. but then again, like, yeah, don't even get me started. Cause yeah. Yeah. And it was like no other position could top that feeling of making it like, you you get what I'm saying? Like no other, like, you know, being a cop or, you know, that didn't seem like, Oh, she made it. Like it just seemed like, Oh, Mm -hmm. you know, lackluster career, but so I'm assuming mm-hmm. that now, and obviously why we're having this conversation is because this stuff is fresh because mm-hmm. you had a moment yeah, where you've been building up for this. Like you said, for two years, it's two been years building been, for it's you. It's been building up in me. Yeah. But this moment, something happened where mm-hmm. it just solidified. Oh, I'm, I'm for sure about this. Yeah. So for a long, what, what caused my frustration is that I couldn't put how I felt into words either so like so like for me i have um i always feel like when i'm talking to somebody about my real feelings that they're not understanding what i'm saying because i'm just like all over the place so before i um i i did send a reply back to my supervisor and i told her that eventually i told her that i wasn't going to apply to med school but before i sent the reply i put my reply in chat gdp to make it more clear and coherent And, like, the response that it gave me, the passage that it um, generated, it just hit home for me. You you get me. You get me. I was like, oh, my God, you get me. Like, somebody finally understands me. Y'all, I fell in love with that GDP. Yeah. (laughs) Because it literally put my emotions, I connected with it. And it's, I guess I had to read it out myself Mm -hmm. for me to fully be like, wow. It was like a relief. Yeah. Y'all, I got felt I I had such relief when I read that response back and I felt so good sending that to her. I felt even so good. I took a picture of it and I sent it to you while I was at work. I yeah. said, You gotta read this. Exactly. Like Can I be honest? When you <laughs> sent that to me again, I, I felt like I was having one of those moments again where you just like this woman need to get it through her head. Yeah. I'm not about to be this doctor. And I was like, What? I'm looking at it like, here she go again. Like Oh, okay. okay. Like, like you told me this already. How many times are we going to keep having but this conversation? It was yeah. so good. And I even told you in that text, like, I think I want to post this on Facebook. Like, mm-hmm. y'all, I know that nobody really cares for real. Like, I'm not a big name where, you know, I have to make a public service announcement. Y'all, I'm not going to bed school. Yeah. But I just felt like 
you know, I was fed up with people asking me that question. Not against them. They didn't know. They don't know my thought process. They don't know that I was sitting on this for two years mm -hmm. that I'm having a debate, an inner debate with myself. But I, I was tired of answering that question and lying about it. Yeah. It just filled me with conviction. And I also felt like, and this is a big one, that me still operating under that lie was stopping me from, from doing what God was telling me that I needed to do. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Like, I'm so focused on trying to keep up this facade that I can't even focus on doing what he yeah. really put in my heart to do. Mm -hmm. And and then also in being and being scared. Mm -hmm. I, I mean the the mission sometimes that God takes you on, uh, it's very scary. And um it's so ridiculous sometimes. Yeah, like to it just don't say make it, sense. you don't even want to tell nobody. Not because you're trying to keep it a secret like you know how everybody yeah. does in today's time, like oh move quietly. It's not even about that. It's like he got me out here looking like a fool. Or at least that's what For it real. feels like yes. in the moment. It don't make sense. I'm like, yeah. whoa, this doesn't make any sense what you're what you're putting in my heart to do. Yeah. It doesn't like it doesn't correlate with everything I did. Like it doesn't correlate with my degree. I have a degree for people who don't know. I have a bachelor's of arts in biology. And so what the desire that I have, um, podcasting, doing all this, being on stage and stuff, speaking and things, it doesn't like that has nothing to do with biology. Yeah. Absolutely nothing to do with science. Mm -hmm. And so even that, that fear of like reactions to other people you know, thinking the same thing. Like, what? Yeah. You just spent four years studying biology and you you're yeah. not gonna pursue anything. And I, I, I can honestly in that field. I can imagine like what you're dealing with because and not just saying this because I'm biased or anything, but you really did have a genuine passion for science. I did and I still do. Yeah. Like I'm I'm a scientist at heart. I say it. Like I love, speak it, speak it. I love, I love discovering what the body can do. Mm -hmm. I'm a, I'm more like an analytical, um, not analytical, uh, ato anatomical biologist. Cause like science covers all areas, but I'm more interested in like the cells and how they regenerate and yeah, how, well the body can do this. And like, it, it's amazing to me the things the body can do that defies all logic. Exactly. So that's what, what, what fascinates me. I'm not really into like, you know, ecology and all this stuff. Like I said, it's many branches of science, but yeah. and that's, that's gotta be that's, hard. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I feel like that, that has to be hard because, and that's probably why you had this, uh, like tug of war, this inner tug of war with that too, because right. it's like, is this, is this for real? <laughs> um, <laughs> it's this, that's an inside joke. That's why we laughing. Joke. We'll, we'll talk, we'll touch on that. Why we just giggled from that <laughs> later. Is this but. for real? <laughs> but for real, like, um, I, and I think when you, when you brought this to me and which is what brings us here right now, um, trying to have this brave conversation, because I feel like it's something that a lot of people deal with throughout multiple phases mm -hmm. of their lives. And, I don't know. It does bring about when you have been striving for something for so long and then all of a sudden it just leaves you. Yeah. Maybe, maybe you've lost the passion for it. Um, the motivation, whatever it is, it just leaves you. And, um, there is something about our society that acts like it's so wrong when you get to that place. Like everybody would be so accepting of you openly saying, oh, I'm not pursuing that anymore as long as you had another direction, that, another that clear meets, direction. A clear direction that also meets the same, like, level. Like, if yeah. I was saying, okay, I'm not going to be a doctor. I'm going to be a lawyer. Right. People would be like, oh, okay. Oh, yeah, yes, yeah, yes, that makes yes, sense. Yes, yeah. acceptable. We approve. Right. We, we approve. approve. We approve. Yeah. And but I like, think it's this stigma around if you get to a place where you realize that you no longer have a passion for something that's no longer your direction. And plus you got no, no clue. answer. You have no follow up. Yeah. You have. And then people that's cause that's the second question they ask. Okay. So you're not going to be a doctor no more. That's cool. Mm -hmm. So what you going to be? Yeah. And you like, I don't know. And, and, and like you like, said, if God gave you some, you, yeah. you can't really explain to them mm -hmm. what he giving you because half the time you don't even know either. Exactly. I don't know where he's taking me. Yeah. I really don't. I don't know what to do now. Mm -hmm. I don't know. And that's something I've been asking God for. And I know he's going to give me the steps. And like 
one thing that we, we talk about this <laughs> God he gives you answers but like in pieces yeah he doesn't give you the full picture because then there's there's er- there's room for error because you'll be like I don't want that or you'd be like I do want that but then you you try to take over and make it happen yeah. sooner than what he planned it's a whole thing so like I'm just taking it step by step really day by day and just trying to be aware of the of the of his of his direction i guess yeah yeah and that's and i'm happy that you're there because Mm -hmm. we this was what like a week or so ago where you were needing guidance Mm -hmm. and direction and out of frustration i walk into the kitchen and she cooking and she like i really wish god would just tell me i was mad at him y'all i was mad she was i was like oh my goodness like why did (laughs) and then i'm tired being who i am (laughs) just kind of smiled and i was like what okay hear me out what if he is telling you or he's giving you direction and maybe you're not adhering to it because it's not what What you you want to hear hear. which is true that's true too yeah because like like i said you want to take over and you want to make things happen the way you want it to go absolutely but absolutely that's not the way it needs to happen so where you are right now is basically at a point I feel like where I have been where shoot if I'm on, honest I could let's not talk about me mm. um <laughs> I do want to bring up though I feel like uh I feel like the way that that this that my life has gone with this decision was God redirected me this is like a redirection mm-hmm. I feel like because y'all like I just want to touch on the fact that in the midst of me saying pursuing medical school, I will have these periods where I would like revert back to a different area. Like I look back at my life and I'm like, Oh, these might've been moments where God is trying to like, no, you're not supposed to be doing this. You're supposed to be doing this. Mm -hmm. Like he would give me moments of like, you know, that, and I'm talking about like, like I first, my first, when when you first asked me what do you want to be when you grow up it was a singer and i was like i'm gonna be a superstar like because like back in i was like really into hannah montana like Mm -hmm. she really that that show really motivated me it made me think that okay i'm about to be this she wrote she wrote a song yeah i did it's on youtube not telling you the title everyone's a superstar okay i'm just saying the song is stuck in my head i still sing it to this day (laughs) she could have made it no it's like I've I've shown few people that video, so like the people who know know. But mm-hmm. like I told her I wanted to be a singer, and um, that was like my big dream. She, you know, I, I got clarity on your response now. Yes, <laughs> speak but it, like, speak your truth. In the beginning, she was just like, "Oh, that's cool and all, but you know, you're gonna it's a it's a hard life, basically." That's basically a response. It was a hard life, and you listed out like you're, you're probably and a lot of people, yeah. a lot of artists have come out and said that it took them a long time to have success, and they they were living in their cars. It would be times where they just couldn't pay their bills. Um, they had to basically, you know, hustle, grind in order to get that that fame mm-hmm. that I wanted. Yeah. And so, but for me, like. And that's a reasonable answer now that I'm thinking about it. But for little Autumn at that time, it was just mm-hmm. like you were saying, no, you're oh, not. Oh, you listen, can't be a singer. <laughs> I'm not going to be shy. Listen, at the end of the day, um, I don't know what was great, what was not so great as a parent. But what we don't have to do is we don't have to sugarcoat it. I was brutal. Yeah, you were. I you was are, brutal you were. to little young uh-huh. Autumn that was like wanting to be this superstar and when she told me that, like, if I'm going to have a real moment with you guys and if anybody's a parent out there, um, that was a frightening moment for me. That's, it's like, yeah, are you like kidding your, me? That's like your son telling you, like, Mom, I'm going to be a rapper. Yeah. Oh, Lord. <laughs> Listen, I, I. so for me, one thing that I've never really done with 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 you all when you were little is that. um I always, even, even, you know, my mom told me when y'all was real little, y'all were like toddlers and I was talking, uh, so real, so professional to these little, two little toddlers. And I'll never forget my own mama told me, April, they don't understand what you're talking about. (laughs) And I was like, they will, you know, eventually. And so I always continue to talk to you, you two in that way. Um, and so for me, that was just me having another real moment. And now that I look back on it, 
I should have provided that context for you. Mm -hmm. I assumed that you understood that I was not saying you couldn't be this superstar. I just was saying, you know, me, I'm like, again, it, it was almost like another challenge accepted moment. Okay, mm -hmm. so then you know what you're going to have to yeah, do you to gotta, get there, you right? you got to put the work. Yeah, and I didn't connect that at yeah. that time. It seemed like she just flat out said, no, you're not going to be a singer. Yeah. That's that's what I, and it really crushed me. I was like, oh, then what am I supposed to, what am I supposed to do? But I'm um getting off topic a little bit. But um, so that kind of made me, like open my mind up to like okay so what am I going to do and so um sixth grade is anatomy day washu med school students they bring a bunch of body parts to our school for us to look at and stuff and you know first thing I see when I walk into the auditorium is a table where they have a real life brain and I'm like, that's the first table I went to. I'm like, oh, my God, a brain. And so, you know, the med school student is, like, telling me all the stuff about the brain and blah, 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 and all that. Um, and then, you know, I see the other body parts. And then our teacher asks us, okay, uh, choose something that interests you and look up a career path that um, involves that. And so I was like, okay, so what jobs can I have? What job can I do where I'm working with the brain? And neurosurgeon pops up. And so I look into that and it was like, okay, 14 years. It was like 14 years of schooling. Showed me how much I would be making a year, which was a lot. I was like, when I saw that number, I was like, oh, bet. <laughs> I'm making that it's, much it's a year. It's probably depreciated since Yeah, then. yeah. It probably went down a little bit since I looked it up. But um, And then, you know, so like I was like, okay, I think this is what I want to do. And I came home to you and I was like, Ma, I think I know what I want to do. And I was like, I want to be a neurosurgeon. Yeah. And so then that was... And you were on board with it. You were like, okay, boom. Yeah. Let's I do was it. on board with it because to be honest, like even the way you're saying it right now, somebody would think, okay, she just was a little girl and she ran in. But no, you were certain. You were certain. Yeah. You I was certain. certain. Like I, I did my research. Like the teacher told us say, to you research came it. came in with, yeah. with specifics. Mm -hmm. I knew what I need to do. It, it, You know, when I was doing my research in class, it was like 14 years of schooling. And I dug deeper. I was like, okay, so why is it 14 years? And I realized, okay, I need to do four years of of undergrad four years of um of uh, med school six to eight years of residency maybe a, a year or two of fellowship and then i'll officially be a neurosurgeon and that all added up to approximately 14 years mm -hmm. even that didn't e even deter me like i was i was telling my friends around me at the time like y'all i found neurosurgery and they was like how much they was just basically like how long you got to be in school for that and i said 14 years and they was looking at me like Ain't no way. Uh-uh. <laughs> no. And I was like, I could do it. Yeah. I could do it. I'm working with brain. I get paid this much. I could do it. And so, yeah, I was set. That yeah. was my decision. And so since then, when you were on board with it, like, we did further research. And we was like, okay, this is what we need to do. This is what you need to do. Um, And, and yeah. Like, yeah. we researched. Not only that, but it was like this, like, you know, I have to have the good grades. I have to have the competitive G GPA. Mm -hmm. And so that was like what my life was tailored on. I have to have all these check boxes checked before, you know, yeah, I can and I, pursue that. I, I, one thing that I always did is I kept checking in with you yeah, periodically throughout the years. Is this still what you want to do? Because honestly, I wanted to make sure I play my part. And so with that being said, in trying to have a real conversation right now and with, and with everybody else, um, when you first initially, um, Sometimes we have to keep our innermost thoughts to ourselves. And when you first started throwing out that you were no longer interested in being a neurosurgeon, if you can recall, I would say, okay, Autumn, there's so many other fields of like in the, in in the healthcare space that exactly. I can take up. That you can take up and, mm -hmm. and even different physicians. And I'm yeah. like, maybe once you get there, I'm like, you're going to have rotations. Mm -hmm. You um, are going to experience different yes. things. And you may want to do something different because inwardly, my first thoughts were, um, I wanted you to be, let's just be real. I wanted you to be something that I considered successful. Mm -hmm. um, I, I wanted the, I wanted the bragging rights. 
let's just be real. Yeah. I wanted to be able to say, my daughter is it's a, a doctor. doctor. She's going to Harvard Medical School. Oh, listen. And then when we started joking around about house. house. Doctor. Doctor house. house. Oh, come on. I yes, couldn't wait house for that MD. moment. Oh, my goodness. That just like moments like that. House MD. Um, I just felt like, oh, this is destined like okay they got a whole show my last name in this field Mm -hmm. like okay yeah i can do this um and then also with that um i bring this up because there was periods like when you would check in with me and i'll be like i really don't want to do this Mm -hmm. like i don't want to do anything with healthcare at all like when you respond like well there's other things even in my head i was like but i don't want to do those other things i don't want to be in healthcare. period yeah. And I found myself getting involved in extra uh, curricular activities in school um, that resolved around like music. Like I did drama in high school. Mm-hmm. And um, even when, like when I was in elementary school, I was always doing like the plays or like volunteers for stuff like that. You did. And so there's moments where I was doing something pertaining to entertainment that I just felt like, oh, this is my space. But then instantly be filled with fear because that's not what the path, that's not the path I laid out for yeah. myself. Yeah. That's a whole different. It, it wasn't just mm-hmm. your fear either, because like I said, when you first started showing me signs of um, uncertainty and things, I felt really, I felt discouraged. Mm. I felt discouraged. And again, you get the sense of, you do get a sense of like, okay, well, if not that, then what? Yeah. Then what? And then honestly, if you, if you think about it, man, you had some really tense conversations around oh, these moments yeah. when we you would, would say that mm-hmm. because I went through different emotions or different stages and at one point I was even feeling like um you know okay well well then what are you gonna do I I, I think I was trying to get to a place where I felt re- resolved with that you didn't want to do that but then my whole thing was like okay well then what are you gonna do because what you're not gonna do yeah is and <laughs> that brought up a lot of like anger and within me mm-hmm. because you would ask me okay then what you're gonna do and like 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 i just told you guys i don't know yeah but i felt like i needed to have an answer i needed to have a, a separate like a different like a firm answer when you would ask me that like yeah. I, in order for me to tell you the truth and say i don't want to do medicine i needed to have a second backup plan yeah in order to even tell you that but i didn't and so i was like harboring all this all these emotions within myself. And so when you would come at me with like a little bit of spice to your voice, I like to call it a little bit spicy. I'm like, okay, then what are you going to do? Yeah. That would just instantly fire like something in me. And I'm like, oh my God, you know, yeah. I can't tell her exactly what I'm thinking. Well, that was but just, then, that was yeah. just fear on my part. Cause mm-hmm. it is scary. You do listen, just like what the Lord said. I got hopes. Right. You got dreams and, and a plan for and, you. Yeah. Yeah, plans I understand for that you now. to prosper. Exactly. Plans Parents. for you to su- succeed. Mm-hmm. You know, so like, um, and it's scary not knowing. Yeah, too. It is, and and but you know what started to help me, Autumn. To be honest with you, what started to help me, like I said, really be okay with not only first you not wanting to pursue this thing that you had me on board with for years. But then also even getting to a place where I had to back off and be okay with the fact that you didn't know, even, even if you didn't know yet that you didn't know, or that you was not willing to admit all of that, what really got me to a place where I had to be okay was honestly just looking and examining my own life. And from my own life and my own experiences, I can tell you that, and don't get me wrong. I think there's never anything wrong with people making plans for their lives. Um, I think I think that is spot on. But I can tell you that out of every phase in life where I have made a plan, um, something, whether you want to call it life or whatever, what have you, has always tend to send me in a different direction. Mm. But what has been amazing about that as it relates to my life is that no matter what the deviation is, Um, I have always clinged on and held on to my beliefs and my faith and have always been working to improve my relationship with God. And in times of my obedience to what he's told me, he has not failed me. He has steered me in the right direction. Now, notice I said in times of my 
obedience because I haven't always been um, obedient and I have definitely dealt with the consequences in times that I was not obedient. But what you know, you want to know one thing that I learned is God never wastes a thing. He, mm. he will never waste a thing about your life. Yeah. And even though you had made a comment earlier, you said um, you felt like he was trying to redirect you. That could yes. be true. But let me tell you something. The path that you did take, baby, you know, people may call it scraps or, mm. or trash or a waste of time. That is not how God sees that. And yeah. he doesn't waste a thing about your life. And I know that for a fact. Yeah. Everything in my life that I thought was a pointless moment, a waste of my time, I would feel dread about how much time I wasted with either people in my life or uh, going, pursuing a thing or a situation. But when I look at how he was able to gather all that scrap up, all that stuff that I thought was trash and make it useful and purposeful for my life, man, it was those moments that helped me to realize, April, it's going to be okay. So what? She doesn't want to pursue this anymore. So what if she doesn't even know what you do know? You may not know. She not. She don't know. Nobody knows. But what you do know is that you have a a daughter who has decided to believe in the same God that you believe in. And with that being said, you know, what you do know is that that's enough. Yeah, that's enough. I'm glad you touched on that because that's why I made that comment that I feel like God was redirecting me because I really relate to Paul Saul slash Paul's story. And I was like reading up on him in the book of acts. And, you know, um, I realized like, if you look at Saul's or Paul's life, his his upbringing doesn't make sense with what he eventually was called to do. Mm -hmm. Like, just to give you context on on Paul, Paul was raised in Tarsus, right? Come on, and come on, Bible It was it was it was, it was a popular Roman city. He was he was born a Roman citizen. Right. Yeah. Um. And he was born in like a devout Jewish family. So like and Tarsus was known for, you know, its institutions, educational background. So he got a vigorous Jewish like education. Mm -hmm. Like if you want to compare it to modern day, he basically went to med school. Like he was he was he was the person going to those elite private schools. You know, he had you know, he was a, a child genius because he's getting all this like very detailed knowledge on, on top of that. He was surrounded by Greek culture. So he was, you know, you, you later learned that he was bilingual. He could speak Aramaic and Greek. And wow. that was because he was raised in that environment. And so like. To have him end up just like being a disciple. Yeah. Like he could have been. He it also he was he was an apprentice of um I think I'm about to say this name wrong but Gam Gamaliel Gamaliel who was a rabbi he was a Pharisee a very well known Pharisee like he was a part of the Sanhedrin and stuff so like he was up there and Paul was like his apprentice like right under him learning under him from a very young age all the way up to his like twenties yeah so look at my little Bible yeah like, I feel like she's schooling he, me like, right now Paul's destiny. If he wasn't, if he didn't have that encounter with Jesus, he would have been like the lawyer. He would have been the doctor, not the doctor because he didn't study medicine, but like he would have been the lawyer or like a part of, you know, he would have been like a, a, a prestigious professor teaching about the Jewish law or he would have been like a judge in the law system, you know, giving, you know, making decisions. And so I connected with that because to have him just be a disciple you know this then the disciples didn't make money yeah they were living meager like if you look at what what um how jesus how the disciples lived with jesus when he was on earth they you know if you watch the chosen <laughs> <laughs> i'm not riding on the chosen like we already discussed that you know that's you know hollywood incorporate with the bible so don't take it for heart but like right. you saw how they lived with the chosen like they went days without food mm -hmm. like the that don't make sense for Paul. Paul, yeah. like you grew up in this family, like you have the knowledge, you have the skills. Why don't you pursue that? Yeah. It didn't make sense. And I connected with that so much and Paul had to be redirected. And that's why I said I was redirected because mm -hmm. Paul was out here killing Christians yeah. and he thought he was righteous in that. That's a good, that's a good p comparison. Yeah. yeah I like and he that. thought he was righteous in that. And so Jesus was like, Paul, why are you killing me? Like you're killing me. What you doing? 
this pathway that you made for yourself, you think you're doing the right thing, yeah. but that's not what I made you for. Yeah. And so now thus begins the journey, my redirection. And now you have to really pursue. And then to touch on your point where God doesn't waste a thing, look at what his upbringing allowed him to do. Yes. Yes. Not only was he able to like back in the day, with it, it was a it was a Roman law. They had to make it a law that as a Roman citizen, you can travel through Rome under the protection of Roman law. Mm-hmm. And so he was able to travel to all these different spaces. You read about it in the book of Acts because he was a Roman citizen. Yes. Peter was a um was born in Galilee. That's not a Roman city. He's not a Roman citizen. So he was kind of restricted. Yeah. And where he could travel. Look at God. I'm telling you, he won't waste exactly. a thing. Exactly. He won't waste a thing. Another thing, he was bilingual. He could speak Greek so that he could speak to the Greek Gentiles. He could relate to them. Mm-hmm. He knew about their culture. In fact, in the book of Acts, when he went to Athens, and, you know, Athens was really into, like, um, worshiping, um, what's what's her name? Worshiping one of the Greek gods that we know, the one of the big ones that everybody should know in Greek culture. And he was like, basically, he did a whole speech. He was like, guys, I know, I know that this is your culture. I know this is how you were raised, but there's a God. There's mm-hmm. only one God. And even then, people was like, they saw his, his, the way he talked and they were enamored, but even they couldn't, they really couldn't understand, like, what is he talking about? There's only one God. What is, who is this Jesus? What is he talking about? Yeah. They just didn't get it. But he could relate to people because of the way he was, he was brought up. Mm-hmm. And it's, I bring um I like Acts 22 and Acts chapter 16 read about it cuz it's funny cuz he uses the fact that he's a Roman citizen to get him out of situations where he was going to where he was going to be like uh whipped yeah. and killed. Absolutely. Cuz like the I'm just yeah. really fascinated right now like, with you sharing No, and Acts from 22 your look. I'm yeah. bring it up. Acts 22, right? He goes to Jerusalem. He knows he's about to be um that he's going to be seized and put into jail and possibly killed because he's been preaching the word of God in all these different Roman cities and word got back to Jerusalem that he's preaching. Um, he's saying that the law of Moses is not valid. People, sh- the Jewish people shouldn't follow it. That's not what he was preaching, by the way. Mm-hmm. This, these are lies that the Jewish people in Jerusalem are making against him to like basically shut him up because he's allowing, he's basically giving Gentiles hope and they don't like that. Yeah. And so, while he's in prison, right? So they, when he comes into Jerusalem and he goes into the temple, everybody starts to rally. He was like, "This is the, this is the, this is him, y'all. He's he's trying to bring the Gentiles to the temple. He's defiling the Jewish tradition. Let's kill him. Let's kill him." And so it's a whole riot, right? Yeah. So then you know the Roman guards are hearing about this riot that's happening down at the temple, and so they come and they're like trying to defuse the problem. And they see that Paul is the one that they're accusing and everything. So they take him into prison, or not to prison yet. Um, or you can call it a prison, but take them to the barracks, whatever that means. Mm-hmm. And they like, okay, why are y'all trying to kill this man? Why are y'all, why are y'all beating this man? Like, what did, what did he do? And so the Jewish people are like, he's over here blasphemy, God, and la 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 la, and all that stuff. And so the guard to appease the the crowd, because that's what the Romans used to do. They they were appeasers. Mm-hmm. They were about to whip him, but then Paul said, I, I, I'm a Roman citizen. You can't whip me. You cannot persecute me until I have a trial. And then the guard Ooh. was like, wait, you're a Roman citizen? And, and Paul was like, yes, I'm a Roman citizen. And then the guard got a little salty. He was just like, well, I'm a Roman citizen too. But the Ro- the guard had to pay for his Roman citizenship. Paul was born a citizen. And that's what he yeah. responded to. Paul was like, well, I was born a Roman citizen. And the commander, he got scared because he knew it was against the law for him to whip Paul or do anything that the Jewish people wanted him to do without mm-hmm. Paul having a trial. So they let him go. And that wasn't the only instance. He did that again with Silas and Paul was in jail in chapter uh, Acts 16. I'm not going to get into that story. You have to read it yourself where he uses the fact that he's a Roman citizen to get out of situations that will stop his mission that God put him on. I am just in awe. I'm in awe right now. I'm in awe. First of all, mm-hmm. I'm in awe of, I've always had so much respect and um, honestly, sometimes speechless with what God is doing with you. Mm. And when it comes to you studying the word and, and in this context of talking about how God doesn't waste a thing, yeah. seeing how you would apply and be so serious about studying yeah. when you were so little 
and seeing you take those same principles yes and applications and applying it to how you study the word of God and me being somebody who is of my age been rocking with been rocking with quiet Christ mm-hmm. let me say that better because I don't know why I was struggling rocking right there with Christ it. yeah <laughs> rocking with <laughs> Woo. Rock, rocking <laughs> yeah say something else baby rolling i've been riding <laughs> riding i've been riding with christ um <laughs> since like 12 and yet when i tell you even in my study time the way he reveals things to you because that's that's the holy spirit mm-hmm. and the way he reveals knowledge and wisdom to my child um it is, I am in awe of God. Yeah. And I'm even in more awe, again, in the context of this, of seeing that, wow, because at first I just was saying something like, God won't waste a thing. No, really, I wasn't. I was in relation to my own life and realizing that he hasn't wasted a thing. And then hearing you elaborate on that through Paul's life and even now, even understanding, baby, you're going to be okay. Yeah. Like, I, that's why he I was saying I relate to that because, like, when I when I was battling with myself for over the past two years, and to be honest, I started to have um, I kind of knew that I wasn't going to med school like my junior year of college, but like like I said, I was harboring harboring that decision and battling with that decision, going back and forth for years. Um, so that's like what 2021, 20, I think mm-hmm. my junior year was. Yeah, so it's been more than two years, but like, or has it been two? No, Girl. it's we're been in more. A, we're in a time yeah, warp yeah. now it, since since yeah, COVID. COVID really, yeah, it threw me off. But I don't know. I don't know how many years it's been. Exactly. Um, it feels like ten. Right. But, <laughs> but like, so it's been like I've been battling with myself, and I've been trying. The the thing that I've been asking myself, like, okay, I was asking God, like, then what was this all for? Like, what was my experience in college for? What what is this degree for? Like, what is what is me even? Like, what was my, you putting, not, he didn't put the desire for med school in my heart, but like, what was that, like that thought, why was that even brought to my attention? And you about to get a Paul preparation. Grade. Exactly. You don't like know. Like, why, <laughs> what, 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 why, what experiences in college contributes to what where you're leading me now? Like, mm-hmm. this doesn't make sense. And so, like you said, I started to he started to reveal pieces of my experiences in college that I can now relate to how I study the word. Yeah. And it's just as simple as that. Like me, the way I used to study for exams Mm -hmm. is how I studied the word. Like, and that's just one moment. And even to be honest, this podcast wouldn't have had, wouldn't have existed if I didn't meet the people I met in college. Yeah. Like they are the ones that was like, you know, we should we should do podcasting. Like I didn't even know podcasting ex- existed until I met the people that I met in college, yeah. and they gave me they encouraged me about it. Because like even then I'm like, oh, this is deviating from med school. Like, uh, don't even entertain that idea. But yeah. they were like giving me. They was like, no, let's do it. Let's, this is good. This is, let's do it. We, we can, can do, do it. this. Regular people can yeah. have a voice mm-hmm. and and speak about it. Yeah, yeah. And then that's why I feel like I was being re- redirected. That's why I feel like God led me to Umsel. Mm-hmm. He led me to the people I met because he was redirecting. He was shifting my focus. It was an encounter. I had my encounter with Jesus. Yeah. Like Paul had his encounters to in Jesus the road, yeah. when he was going to Damascus. Mm-hmm. That was like, I had several encounters with Jesus actually throughout that, that journal, that journey. Yeah. And so I feel like even though I don't know what I'm going to do in my life at this point, I still feel like I'm at, I'm in the right direction. Like I'm a, like my yeah. path is straight. I mean, I just feel like you're not alone. Um, like I said, if I'm going to be honest myself, uh, I'm not really sure what I'm doing. And honestly, if a lot of people want to be real, I don't think they know what they're doing. Yeah. I think we try on things like we try on shoes. Mm-hmm. Like we're trying to figure it out to see if it if it fits right. But like I said, if I'm going to be real and if I'm in a moment where I have to try to encourage somebody else that's in that same space, one thing that I do know for sure is like what I said, he, he doesn't waste the thing. When I look at my life, the, the good, the bad, the ugly, he hasn't wasted anything from any of that. And he's turned it into something. Uh, he made it have a purpose. 
Yeah. And I don't know. Here's the thing. I, there's nothing that is outside of, of, of his presence, right? There's nothing that's going on outside of his presence. And so maybe he had that planned all along. Maybe, you know, that was part of all the preparation. Um, but that's just what I know for sure that he doesn't waste a thing. And I actually wanted to, um, like, as you were talking, I thought about several things because I think when you're at a place where you are having this uncertainty, there is a few scriptures for myself that I like to keep referring to, even when I feel um, uncertain about my direction, um, where I'm going, or if, I've, if, if I'm making the right decisions, right? If I'm making the right decisions, and um, that is here. First of all, you guys, the book of Proverbs, written by the man who had the most wisdom, the man, the myth, the legend, Solomon, <laughs> Out of anybody, right? This is don't take my word for it. Go look it up yourself. Uh, according to God, nobody has ever and nobody ever will possess that amount of wisdom. He just won't do it, you know, anymore for anybody. And so, um, not that level. Mm -hmm. And uh, and then Paul. And uh, don't give me uh, not Paul Solomon. Don't give me. I was start. I was going to start talking about how he went. Yeah. He got beside himself. He did. Mm -hmm. But uh, but anyways, we're not going to talk <laughs> about that. But for real, first of all, the book of Proverbs within itself is an amazing book to read when you're trying to figure out life's directions. Um, but honestly, as I was praying um, for myself, for my children, you know, for my family, um, as we all just try to figure out, you know, like what what's our next step? What's our next move? What should we be doing? Um, it, it occurred to me that God is not trying to withhold any good thing from us. Right. He really isn't. And I think one of the first things we have to do is that we can pray all day long and ask God for wisdom, ask him for direction. And I believe, and I'm starting to believe even more and more, like it is my faith. I have a strong faith now in believing that he is truly not trying to withhold a thing. He is not trying to withhold any good thing from any one of us. And so then it has to be a matter of us listening and obeying mm -hmm. that that's where the problem has to be. That's what was spoken into my spirit that, okay, if I believe this, if I'm truly having the faith that he's not withholding anything. And yet I feel like you've been praying, asking for direction and feel like, you know, when I met you in the kitchen and you were so frustrated feeling like, well, he's not giving me this, this guidance in that moment where I told you maybe he is, but you're not listening. That's because of what he's been working in on me. So if I have that faith, then that literally means that maybe I'm not listening and I'm not obeying. But in even order for us to listen, we have to know that one, that truth alone is true. He's not withholding a thing because he lets us know exactly what his plans are and what his will is through his word. Yeah. And so first we have to read the word of God because that is the truth. And then secondly, we have to obey the mm. word of God. And I think that's where the battles are. That's where the conflict is. And so, you know, as I was praying, that's what's placed on my heart. But I want to share these scriptures. I like, again, read the whole book of Proverbs. But for me, Proverbs chapter three, verses five and six, where he says, trust in the Lord with all your heart and lead not into your own understanding and all your ways, acknowledge him and he shall direct your paths. Mm -hmm. And again, you know, me and you talk all the time. I said, people be reading and really leaning on some of the promises for God, but they don't look at the conditions for the promise. Like he usually says something else or something that you need to be doing in order to receive that. So in yeah. this case, it is trusting with all of your heart and not leaning to your own understanding. Cause yeah. even in, when we were saying in the beginning that it don't be making no sense mm -mm. what he's telling you, like, what are you doing? You got me out here looking like a fool with my pants on the ground. ground. Like <laughs> for real. Got the gold in the mouth. <laughs> Turn sideways. <laughs> <laughs> like, but, uh, but honestly, that is, I just think that, you know, we have to really understand. And for me, I, I don't know about anybody else, but I've been really leaning on that heavily. Like, man, God is not really, he's not trying to withhold a good thing from me. And if I'm truly asking him, he also says in his word that if I ask, I, it shall be given to me. Yeah. So we, we keep saying, I'm asking, I'm asking. It has to be a matter of us listening. 
you got to be in tune. Uh, that's what I'm saying. Like you have to kind of be in tune with the Holy Spirit in order to even notice that he is, it's right in front of you, but you almost have to be like super focused in order to see the answer. Yeah. And so, and there's so many things that can derail you. Like you get distracted by other things and stuff. Yeah. Absolutely. So that's where I am right now is just really trying to make sure I'm in a place where I can hear his answers. I can see the signs and the wonders I can, you know, I can just be so in tune with God that I just don't question it anymore. I know. And then another part of that is that, like I said, maybe we are listening, but we don't like what it is that What's we've heard, heard. Yeah. because it, it seems like that's not, we're not being given what we want. Right. Mm-hmm. right? But then again, I have to direct everybody. Um, and these are things that recently I've been really holding on to. I got to direct everybody to Matthew chapter six, verses 33. Um, you know, this is one of my theme verses for 2024. It's something that the Lord spoke to me at the beginning of the year. Um, honestly, in 2023 is when he first yeah. started seeking, and, and I've held on to this. But and it says, "But seek ye first the kingdom of God and His righteousness, and His righteousness." You can't leave that part out. Mm-hmm. And all these things shall be added unto you. Now, to give context uh, around that particular verse, um, what God is talking about prior is just how much we be worrying, worrying about what we gonna eat and and all of these different things. What I'm gonna wear. And then yeah. basically, he goes on to say, "But if you seek." the kingdom of God first and his righteousness, all these things will be added unto you. Meaning I'm a provider. I'm going to, I'm going to make provisions for you. Um, and so maybe when we're receiving and listening to what it is that God is telling us the direction that we need to go, the decisions that we need to make. And in order, maybe instead of like rejecting that because it doesn't look like or sound like what it is that we want we got to, again, go back to what the truth is, which is if his word says, if I seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness and all of these things going to be added to me, to me, what that sounded like is that I'm about to supersede Yeah. what you're even trying to believe him for and what you're asking for him for. I, I may not be talking to nobody else, but I'm kind of talking to myself right now. These are revelations that um, have been spoken to me that I've really been trying to because that's the thing. We, we talk about the word of God and I feel like everybody and it could just be my algorithm, but I'm inundated all the time with podcast speakers, preachers, teachers, um, <laughs> uh, 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 regular people, uh, bar baristas, everybody now who is reading the word of God, which I love, by the way. Yeah. And who is, you know, giving their two cents on it, which I love, by the way. Um, and I just know. For me, it's it's more than that, you guys. When we're hearing these things, when we're even discussing these things, we got to get from that, from just hearing and talking about it, to, to application Applying, of it. yeah. And know that application is not you applying and then you move on. It's a constant thing. It's a practice. It's a practice mm-hmm. that you have to keep on doing. So this is where I am right now yeah. with all these things. Mm-hmm. And I'm just hoping that it'll be helpful not only for you um, as you're navigating not knowing where you're going or what's next or what to do is that maybe the what to do you do know. And that is to seek ye first, the kingdom of God, that is to follow him. That is to be obedient to what it is he's placing on your heart, yeah. despite how ridiculous or how much of a fool he, you think he may have you looking like, cause mm-hmm. you're following him in that way. Yeah. Um, final note again, I, I got to bring it back to my boy, Paul. Yeah. Right now I'm working as a medical assistant and right now I'm at a space where I'm just like, I'm just having a job just so I could, you know, um, just so I can take care of myself financially, yeah. you know, have some money coming in. Cause I can't, can't live on my butt being a bum No, life. That's that life is more hard, Yeah, but you know, it just brought me back to like, you know, Paul had some tent making abilities as well. Like that could have been a profession he could have pursued as well. Cause he was good at it. But, you know, and and you can read in the book of Acts that he worked as a tent maker just so he could have money and that he wouldn't be a burden on all these churches that he's visiting. Wow. And I feel like that's where I am right now. And so it brings me hope because we see uh, even though Paul met a demise, Mm. (laughs) he was beheaded. (laughs) Did he or did he get a promotion? Oh, okay. Yeah. When you look at it like that, yeah, yes. And yeah. Paul was actually actually very happy to die for for Jesus. Mm-hmm. Yeah, he he was he was like, I am honored. Basically, that's what his final speech was. I am honored. Yeah, to have gone through the turmoil, but just to see what what my preaching and teaching has done 
for the kingdom of God. And arguably mm-hmm. one of the most purpose filled lives yeah. to be lived. Yeah. Because my God, my God. We would not have, we no. would not, we would not exist yeah. without Paul. Absolutely. What not. he did. Yeah, because although Peter mm-hmm. Peter was definitely ride or die, and you know the Lord you know built his church upon Peter, uh, Peter, if we want to go back, Peter Peter didn't believe in in extending the knowledge. Yeah, he and had the good a moment to Gentiles. He had a moment. Yeah, where he was, you know, he ain't really like the like the idea of these Gentiles, you know, all these people coming in. But that's another story. That's yeah, another. That's, got, some, that's another lesson. It <laughs> but um, he had a moment. He got a, he 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 came when Paul addressed him. When he had that encounter with Paul, he was like, Paul was just like, uh, uh-uh, uh, yeah, get yourself together. Exactly. <laughs> we'll talk about that. I love that story. I know. I we'll it's talk a good about one. that another time. But like, um, I just I'm filled with hope. Um, I I do still have moments where I just feel like, what am I doing? I do get moments where I'm scared too, mm-hmm. and I'm like, am I going to be? Is this what I'm going to be doing for the rest of my life? Yeah. Like this is not what I want. Like what? Yeah. This don't make no sense. I don't. I don't. So, think, I don't think I'll let you do that. Oh. Yeah, <laughs> no. yeah. I'm still God. God's still working on me, but I still and I still insert myself into mm-hmm. areas that I shouldn't. I'm working on that too. Trying yeah. to trying to practice but, that. But um, yeah, but yeah, it's if one thing that I hope that people get from this episode and my story, my testimony, is that at the end of the day, it is my life. The in decision I have to live with my decisions for the rest of my life. Mm-hmm. I got all these voices on the outside telling me what I should do what is best for me. Um, I think what is best for me at times, but like, you know, I want to, I want to look back at my life and be like, okay, I made the right decision. Yeah. You know? Yeah. And I just know that medical school is, is not the right decision. It's not the, it's not the space I should be in me working as a medical assistant for like uh, over six, seven months now, mm-hmm. even solidified that more because I'm actually seeing what it takes to be in healthcare. And I'm looking at these physicians and yeah. all these different people you got to interact Ooh. with. And I'm just like, Oh, this so is definitely we, not for me. We didn't even share that part mm-hmm. because even, even with you pretty much feeling like you had made up your mind, <clears throat> me being the mother that I am, I did encourage you to um, try it out to try this taste out. and see. I did taste mm-hmm. and see. That's the word of God. Yeah. Um. And so, uh, <laughs> so I did. And so, yes, that's what that's what Autumn is referring to. Everybody, she, um, I encouraged her to um, pursue a um, a quick training um, program and training and you know vocational program to do medical assisting. That is my background. Um, I felt like. There's no that position could have gave her a good enough view Mm -hmm. um, into the medical field in order for her to make up her mind to really see, you know, if this is something that she wants to pursue, because that's a huge commitment. Medical school is is it's a huge commitment mentally and financially Mm -hmm. um, time time wise. wise. And I've talked to a lot of residents and and fellows um, and they were like, look. It's some that was really honest with me. I'm like, y'all, I, I don't like what I'm doing, but I've made it this far. I've invested too much for me to back out. Mm-hmm. And like when when I when I was hearing those responses from people who are are going to be making the money, yeah. they're going to be having the notoriety. Notoriety. Let me notoriety. let me say another word. Let me let me say another word. They're going to be having the rep reputation. Yeah. Of prestige, like they're gonna you know yeah. have the big house and everything. But to hear them say that, like, I didn't want to get to that place where I can't do anything else, mm-hmm. where I'm stuck with that and not just be miserable. Exactly. Because, like, low key, I've seen some mis- I've been working under some miserable doctors and is mm-hmm. I do not want that. Exactly. Well, because I think that's what it is. It's not it's not the titles. It's not um, the pay. It's not it's even the, the prestige and the yeah. accolades and stuff. It's, 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 are you happy? Yeah. Do you have true joy? And to be honest with you, again, not trying to get real spiritual. I just feel like that's why you have so many people, millionaires, um, six or what we would measure as successful people still being so unhappy or unfulfilled. And I think that that's because there's a difference between um, God's purpose. Yes, exactly. And the purpose you created yourself or somebody mm-hmm. else created for you exactly which is why i just encourage people who are in my situation like it's okay it's okay 
and, and I'm still, I'm still have moments. Like I said, I still have moments of fear, but it's okay. I have to remind myself that I don't know what I'm doing. Yeah. It's okay. But I would rather live in this truth. I feel so, re- so much relief living in this truth and acknowledging that I don't, that's not my path. Yeah. That I just feel like sky's the limit now. Mm-hmm. I feel unstoppable. I'm in a position where I can test out other prof- prof- uh, professions. Um, I'm just, I'm blessed to have, be in that position. I know other people don't yeah. have have that um, ability or are able to have that space to really discover what they want to do. Mm-hmm. But, yeah. Yeah. You, you about to make me start shouting because God mm-hmm. is good. That's he why. is. He really is good. And that's, oh my goodness, connection. That's probably, he doesn't waste a thing. The yeah. only reason I'm able to do this is because I have a degree. Yeah. I'm able to test, taste and see different areas and be okay financially. Yeah. Because I have all these accolades on the back of my name. Mm-hmm. Absolutely. And so he, my, my education was not wasted because now I'm in a space where I don't want to do med school, but there's other stuff I could do and I yeah. can get paid the same amount. Just like you just explained um, with Paul. Mm-hmm. Like he had all these other different trades. I didn't know. A tent maker? I didn't know that. Thank yeah. you. He um, yeah he <laughs> made tents. I yeah. guess that was a good, that was a lucrative trade to have to exactly. be a tent maker. Um, well, listen, y'all. We really hope that you guys have been following along with this conversation. Um, I almost wish you know we could have had some more people giving their perspective and insight. But I hope that you guys enjoyed it. I hope that you received um, something from it. Mm-hmm. Um, if you got something to say, you know, comment, give us something in the comments, add your two cents, your perspectives, because I think collectively together, if we all throw in our thoughts and, um, and what we're kind of dealing with that we can really help each other. Yeah. We can build a real community where we're thriving, where we're growing, um, learning from one another. So, yeah. So final words from me, I'm not going to med school. Mm-mm. And I don't know what my path is, yeah. but God is good. I know. I was going to say final <laughs> words for me. Um, you do know. Uh, seek ye first the kingdom, kingdom of God. God. I'm and a, all that's, these things. Yeah, that's my path. I'm going <laughs> to seek ye first the kingdom of God. And God will continue to add things on to me. Yeah, absolutely. Mm-hmm. Period. Yeah. Um, so I am going to be posting my response to my supervisor so you guys can read it too. I have to share it. Like, yeah. it's so good. I have to share it. After the release of this episode, if you want to see that, you need to follow us on our social medias, Facebook, um, TikTok, uh, what we else? Instagram. I think that's it, y'all, because, like, we don't be out here like that. Mm-mm. YouTube, at Brave Convos. That's at sign B-R-A-V-E-C-O-N-V-O-S. Follow us on our social medias. Make sure you hit that subscribe button, like this video, share it. Um, please leave your thoughts in the comments. We yep. will we will respond. Like we're not those people that don't just be taking in all these comments. Like we we, we will respond to you. Um, and until next time. Until next time. Read your word. <laughs> and hold up, we gotta we gotta bring this back. Hold up. And let God do His part. Period. Let God do, do His, his part. part. Peace out. Bye, y'all.